Let's talk about pace 1125, and uh, this lesson here is on page 10. It's about finding least common denominators, and we're going to do it a little bit later with variable denominators, but first, let's just refresh our memory about how to do it with fractions, just plain old numbers with fractions, and especially if they have a big denominator. Uh, let me pull a stool over here to put this pace on. All right. So I'm looking here at page 10, and let's grab this example. You have a couple others that are in the pace, but look at this. We have two big numbers, 54 and 90. How do we find the least common denominator of two big numbers? And the way we do that is we break down the, each denominator to find out what are all the prime numbers that make it up. Well, 54 is made up of 6 times 9, Right, six times nine is 54. So the prime factors would be two times three times three times three. Now you could work backwards and say three times three is nine, times three is 27, 27 times two, yep, 54. And then 90, what are the factors that make up 90? Well, nine times 10, so 10 is two times five and nine is three times three. Or we could think of it as 6 times 15. But all these prime factors multiplied together give us uh, these two numbers. Now, how do we find the least common denominator? I always tell my students there's two steps. If you keep these two steps straight, it's easy. Number one is you're going to write down every single number that's used as a factor in either of these numbers. So I'm looking up here, and 2 is used in both of them, so I'm going to write down 2. Uh, 3 is used here, and it's used here. 5 is not used in this one, but it is used in this one. So I've written down every number that's used as a factor in either one of the numbers, okay? Notice neither one of them had 7, so I'm not including 7 in the LCD. Now here's the other key, right? This is the second rule, is I go back and I figure out what is the most number of times that each of these numbers is used in any one of these. Okay, let me say that again. I'm going to use this, each of these factors, the most number of times that it's used in either of these numbers. Two is used once here. It's used once here, so I only use it once in the LCD. 3 is used twice in 90, but look at that, it's used three times in 54. So I need to use it three times in my final answer. Okay? 5 is not does not show up here at all, but it does show up here and it's one time. So I need to use 1 in my answer there. Now, if I multiplied all these together, what would I get? And I'm doing it in my head, but I know that 3 to the third is 27. 2 times 5 is 10. So I'm doing 27 times 10 in my head. Woohoo! 270, okay? So now we need to rewrite these having this common denominator of 270. So we ask ourselves, what would I have to multiply times 54 to get 270? And then what would I have to multiply times 90 to get 270? Now that one's easier. I know that's 3. Okay. Um, 54 would be, let's see. Looks like it's missing, is it just missing the 5? Yep, looks like that's all it's missing is, if I multiplied this by 5, 54 times 5 would be 270. So I'm going to multiply the numerator also times 5. Now I have the common denominator of, looks like 35 over 270, and 33 over 270. Now we can combine them. All right, let's do one more example. <clears throat> 24, let's think about the factors that make up 24. 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. Because it's like 4 times 6, or 8 times 3, whichever way you don't think about it. Um, 80, I'm thinking about 8 times 10, 8 is 2 times 2 times 2, and then 10 is 2 times 5, okay? Or if you think about this, this is 16 
times 5, which is 80. So there's different ways of thinking about it. This would be 20 times 4. That would also give you 80. Anyways, we have the right factors. Now, LCD, the rules are we take every number that's used as a factor in either of the numbers. Then we're going to use the most number of times that that factor is used in either one of them. I see 2 is being used, 3 is being used, and 5 is being used. Okay? No 7s, no 11s, no other weird numbers, just those numbers. So now I'm going to go back and see what's the most number of times that 2 is being used, and it looks like it's 4. 3 is used once, and 5 is used once. So, to find the least common denominator, it looks like all I have to do is multiply 15 times 16. Okay? I'm not going to finish that one for you. You can take that to the next step, figure out what the least common denominator is by multiplying these together. And then figure out what do I have to multiply times 24 to get that LCD. Multiply top and bottom. And then the same thing here, what I multiply times 80 to get the LCD, and multiply top and bottom. Okay? These are the easy ones, because in a little bit we're going to do some that have fract I mean that have um, variables. And uh, we're going to follow the same basic process. We have to find the least common denominator. Oh, by the way, I did see a couple of them in here that have some really big prime numbers, like question 8. Mm hmm Question two have, uh, they don't have already any factors in common because 19 is a prime number. And there's no number that times 19 will give me 83. Same with 91. So, we, <laughs> the common denominator is you just take those two numbers and multiply them together. It's a big number, okay? So sometimes that happens. If there are no factors in common, you just end up with a really big number. Uh, even like number 5, I'm looking at that, the factors of 21 are 3 and 7, and the factors that make up 20 are 2, 2, and 5, so they don't have any factors in common. So basically, you're just going to end up with a really big number. You're going to multiply both of those denominators together. All right, that's enough for that one, and uh, we will continue in a moment with um, adding and subtracting fractions that have variables in the denominator.